Alright, okay. Here's what I have to say with the thought for today. Coming through with something new with no delay. Get right into it. Today I'm going to talk about financial education, financial literacy, knowing about money, knowing about how money works. It's pretty important to me, pretty important what I should see with everybody, but you know, seems like most people don't really know. And it's no one's fault, it's just they're not trying to teach people this stuff. Trying to teach us all type of things about, you know, mathematics. Trying to teach us about some history that was rewritten. Trying to teach us about all kinds of things in school. But really they don't want to see us learn about the money. To me, I've done some research. Looking into the financial education literacy rates around the world and in America. It's pretty shocking to me. It doesn't make much sense. So what I'm going to get into is uh, pretty much looking at the financial literacy rates. Looking at how it has an effect on people. Looking at what uh, financial literacy can do. Looking at what a big role it plays in our lives, but yet just doesn't seem to be working. Doesn't seem to be implemented. Doesn't seem to be a big priority at least for teaching people, but the people on top all seem to know it. The people who all have money seem to be financially literate. Because like they say, it's easy to make it, but it's harder to keep it. But if you have financial literacy, like, it's not that hard. Like, that makes it pretty easy. So, for me, I did not used to, it wasn't until really, like, you know, a couple years ago that I really started getting into all this stuff. And I didn't used to understand it. I used to do what everybody else did. You know, I used to keep all my money in the bank. I used to focus on saving money instead of making more money. I used to think that, you know, the topic of financial education and financial literacy was super boring. But now I really enjoy learning about, you know, the global economy, how everything is connected, how money works. And uh, even looking back, even before I really had an interest in money... I really had an interest in uh, some of the major global financial institutions and how that had an effect on the world. That's why after I graduated high school, I wanted to work for the United Nations so I could uh, learn more about, you know, the financial programs out there that have an impact on the world, like kind of like the World Bank and the IMF, because, uh, yeah, I saw a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of people friends of mine that didn't uh, necessarily, for the most part, live in America that, you know, were telling me about how poor they were, how poor people were in their country, and how it seemed like that the way the system was set up, that they didn't really have any way out of it. So that's really what got me into it, and uh, yeah, I didn't even finish that uh, that uh, major of uh, international relations. What I did was I uh, switched my major to business. Ended up graduating with a degree in business, but now I'm finding myself more and more looking into the stuff that I was before, seeing it how it has a big effect. So, I'm going to get into the topic for today. So, like, really, you know, I believe that if people learn financial literacy and applied it to investing, like, like they would be free financially in about 10 years. I mean, that's all it would really take. I mean, you know, obviously you got to be making money some other type of way. Like, I'm not talking about, like, how to make money here. I'm talking about, like, how to use the money that you have to make it work for you. Because most uh, most of what I see, there's a lot of uh, suggestions and a lot of forces out here that have people having their money work against them. Like, you know, just like the bank in general, like, you know see a lot of ads to save your money in the bank well you know that works out for the bank like I've said many times before uh, the bank's gonna make a lot more money than you're gonna make and a lot of people they'll uh, you know pay somebody after they've worked their whole lives to make a lot of money they'll pay somebody to invest their money for them to put their money to work and now that doesn't make sense to me because if you've been working your whole life on making money why wouldn't you go ahead and educate yourself on how to use that money to your advantage and how to see it grow so this is what I know 
about two-thirds of adults worldwide are not financially literate. Some countries like Australia, Canada, and Northern Europe have the highest financial rates, financial literacy rates. Most of these underdeveloped or what would be called third world countries have the lowest financial literacy rates. The people in those countries are, you know, only about 25% of these people really understand how money works. So yeah, you know, it would really make sense that, you know, rich people, people who have a lot of money understand financial literacy and poor people really don't understand it. So also about you know half of adults in the world save money and only about half the people that save money so only about a quarter of the people in the world actually even use banks and you know it only makes sense that people with bank accounts having a bank account causes you to have some kind of financial literacy just understanding how a bank works so if people don't have a bank account then like it's going to make it even harder for them to understand how like finance works and how money works so part of financial literacy is really understanding like risk diversification meaning like you know how much risk are you taking with a certain investment uh, how you would want to put your money in, in across different kind of investments like don't put your eggs all in one basket aka the bank a savings account a checking account I mean it's important to have these things but like really I just use the bank like as a you know to keep a little bit of money in to uh, use to you know use a card to spend some money here and there but yeah the last thing I'm really trying to do is like save my money in the bank because that's just making money for the bank so uh, I think it's pretty interesting you know just in 2018 uh, credit card debt rose about 25 percent the economy has been rising a lot too and there's a big correlation with that so after the uh, financial crisis crisis of 2008 when uh, you know a lot of really bad loans were made to people who couldn't pay it back because the banks could really you know like loan to whoever they wanted um, you know the banks not the money's not coming from them the banks not losing their own money they're losing losing other people's money who invest in the bank and whenever people put their money in the bank the bank can go and use that money on leverage and loan it out like you know 10 times 20 times what the person gives them and as you saw in 2008 what happened when the banks did this was a lot of people lost their homes a lot of people lost a lot of money but the uh, Federal Reserve and the government just printed out a lot more money and then gave it to the banks and bailed the banks out even though some of these same banks that knew that the economy was crashing went and uh, you know uh, made financial bets basically they shorted the uh, the economy after they're the ones that broke it so they made money either way they made money from the economy going down and they made money from the bailouts and the people who lost were the people who really you know for the most part weren't financially literate they just kind of trusted that you know the banks had their best interest in mind and all that kind of stuff so uh, you know after the uh, financial crisis the government put down a lot of restrictions so that uh, lenders had to be more careful on who they lended to to avoid this kind of thing from happening again and what happened uh, a few years ago uh, when the new administration came into office was one of the first things they did was they went and uh, got rid of all these regulations so that the banks could go and make these bad loans again and uh, there's a lot more debt due to this which has been a big reason that the uh, economy has inflated so much so when everyone's talking about the markets are doing so well and reaching all-time highs and everything well this is true but looking at it like it, it's what I would say like falsely inflated like a lot of this money is just like bad debts just like it was in 2008 so uh, yeah it's uh, it's really proven that people with bank accounts develop higher financial literacy rates but most banks set up measures like you know they'll have like a minimum amount that you need to even bank there and uh, high overdraft fees a lot of things that make it very difficult for poor people to use their services and become more financially literate uh, 
you know, maybe it's just a coincidence that uh, these things are set up like that. But I don't know. To me, it really seems like, you know, the banks understand that, you know, the more people who are financially illiterate, the more money they're going to make, the more people are going to put their money in the bank. So, uh, yeah, our current laws allow the, uh, also allow these financial institutions, you know, uh, mainly, uh, institutions that sell financial products such as investment services that, uh, they can sell customers products that will make more money for the actual institution than the customer. And I mean, this to me, like, is just bogus. Like, how is it that, you know, basically, uh, a service that's supposed to be helping people invest their money um, is making more money than actually like the people that they're trying to make money for like that just doesn't make any sense to me but they're legally allowed to do this so there's definitely you know a lot of laws set up the way I don't really want to get into like lobbying and how all that works with the government but there's a lot of problems going on right now and just like shedding some light on this hopefully in the future uh, these laws can be looked over and changed. And, uh, you know, some, uh, some politicians will do whatever they can to inflate the economy to make themselves look good, even if it means that it will likely cause a financial crash. So when you look at a chart, basically, of, like, you know, the stocks or the economy or financial growth or whatever, what you want to see is, like, a really slow, steady incline. And, uh, whenever you see it just, you know really sharp incline like they call it parabolic when the markets just go way up like that's good for a lot of people who are invested in the markets and they want to see that and then you know they'll be making more money but at the end of the day you know what goes up must come down like the higher it goes parabolic the harder it's going to crash as you saw in 2008 and it's you know the people who understand who are more financially literate when they see this crash coming, they can get their money out. But the majority of the people who have their retirement funds and all this stuff invested in it, they're the ones that are going to lose out. So, you know, all seems to be adding up. And uh, just to add to that, you know, right now there's a big problem with, uh, with especially our economy, but a lot of other economies where, you know, these businesses are getting these huge tax cuts which they're, uh, you know, supposed to be using to uh, send the money down back into the economy um, to the working people, to the, like, you know, just normal people. But what a lot of these companies are doing is they're uh, using this money to buy their own stocks, like stock buybacks. And what happens with this is it, you know, falsely inflates the economy, makes it look like the economy is doing really well, when in actuality it's it's like, held up by like threads you know it wouldn't take much for something bad to happen and then it would just crash and uh yeah all that being said when it comes to investing greed is your worst enemy but most people invest based on their emotions you're not supposed to invest based on your emotions you're supposed to be unbiased when you invest your money so you know when people see the economy going way up a lot of times they they get greedy and then they put more money into it and more and more money into it when it's really at a point where it's about to crash. And when people see that the economy is doing bad, you know, their emotions are saying like, oh, you know, it's not a good time to be, uh, you know, putting money into stuff right now. But that's really the best time. So, yeah, you got to just keep your greed in check, especially when it comes to money. You know, greed is your worst enemy. And uh, I like to say that the... Uh, the median, you know, amount of people aged like 55 to 65 who are looking at retirement, uh, they only have about $100,000 saved up. Now, when you put inflation into into account, like this makes, this turns out to be like about $300 per month. And I mean, of course, now people are living longer than they used to be. So, uh, you know, that could be even less. Like as, as people live longer that number is going to drop. And I mean, everybody knows like you can't live off $300 a month. So that's why I think passive income is so important. And it makes, it makes way more sense than focusing on building up a retirement account. Uh, if you have passive income, you know, you don't, I wouldn't say you don't need a retirement account, but it's better than a retirement account because this passive income is going to keep bringing you money 
you know, where you quit your job, you retire from your job, you might get some kind of pension, but passive income is going to be going on forever. And especially if you have multiple sources of passive income, like that's the best way you can set yourself up. And even after, you know, even if you plan on like working for somebody else your whole life in retirement, retiring, you can start uh, setting up sources of financial uh, or a passive income after you retire. Like just because you retire doesn't mean you have to stop working. And really, like if you're doing it right, the the way you would set up passive income would be through uh, like hobbies, things you already enjoy doing. So, yeah, just, you know, think about, uh, like, all the useless stuff that schools teach people. Like, how important is financial literacy? So, if financial literacy is so important, I mean, it makes me wonder why, like, it's not really taught. Like, why why don't they make it, why doesn't, like, these governments make it, a, a, a like, a mandatory part of the education curriculum? I mean, you know, these things, stuff about finance, like, you don't really need, like, that big of an education you don't have to be some like have an economy degree or something like that to really understand this you can start learning this stuff when like when you're a kid like it would all start to make sense it's pretty simple really when you get into it so uh yeah looking at other other statistics uh it, it looks that you know they've uh done a lot of surveys with financial advisors and a lot of these people realize that uh that it is a big problem with their clients, with people that they deal with on a daily basis, that they have a really low rate of financial literacy, that they don't really understand how the, how the, you know, money is working, how interest works, stuff like that. So on one hand, it makes it harder for them to, you know, explain what they're doing with people's money. But on the other hand, it makes it easier for them to just take their money and do whatever they want with it. And then, you know, just give them back whatever, you know, they give them back and, not really explain too much on how much they made um, profit off of investing someone else's money, stuff like that. So, that being said, um, you would think that, you know, financial institutions, financial advisors would want to set up measures to help people learn more about financial literacy, learn more about how to make their money work for them. But at the end of the day, they don't. It's very few uh it's i guess less than half of these you know major financial institutions that were surveyed uh really have dedicated any effort into helping people learn about this stuff yeah to me that that really doesn't make sense so all that being said this is really you know something that motivates me to help teach people about money help teach people about how to be rich Um, You know, even though I understand that, like, getting rich is, is, majority of that is having the correct mindset, and that's where I focus, like, the majority of my content on. Um, You also need to understand, like, basic financial literacy, kind of like facts, stuff like that, how money works. So you got to combine the two. Really, um, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep on making new content to help people help people get richer, help people, you know, break out of these traps that they got out here that keep people poor. Um, Try to stay, you know, out of the political side of it. Just kind of like give a broad, you know, scope of what's going on without really like calling out politicians or getting into certain sides, stuff like that. Just, Just making it part of people's awareness. And, uh, you know, all that being said, I'm not even going to say the name of the uh, banking firm, or you can look it up if you want to, but uh, one of the biggest drug shipments ever in the history of America was seized at a shipping port in Philadelphia, and uh, they found just like tons and tons of drugs that were, you know, originated obviously in like, you know, South America. First stop was America, then they were going to Europe and a few other countries to drop off their cargo, right? Well, I heard about this, and then a few days later, I found out that uh, this this boat was owned by a major financial financial institution. Um, and not only did they own it, but the government of America decided to seize that boat. And I'm thinking, you know, they wouldn't have seized that 
if they didn't have evidence that this financial institution knew something about what was going on. So I'm just going to end it with that. I think it's pretty interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. Go ahead and smash up the likes if you got some value from this. I hope you did. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Got the link for the email list below too. Going to keep on bringing more. Going to keep on improving every day like Kaizen. If you don't know what that is, Kaizen's continual improvement. And uh, I'm out. That's it for now.